Hi, so in this video, we are going to be exploring the use of the free RTOS mutex. All right, and I must say that the behavior is uh, quite unexpected. All right, it is not your typical uh, behavior that you expect from a RTOS. So it is important that you see this video uh, in full to understand a key difference okay, between how free RTOS implements this mutex compared to um, some other RTOS that they, you may have uh, experience with, for example, the RTX RTOS. All right. So to first uh, create a new text, we use this semaphore handle T. All right. So the implementation uh, for free RTOS is using a common uh, code base of both semaphore and mutex. So that's why we use semaphore handle T to create a mutex. All right. Uh, to sorry to declare a mutex uh, type uh, data type. Subsequently, to create a mutex, we call xmfor create mutex. Okay. Now, once the mutex is created, we can use it. Right? As we know, the concept of mutex is a lock and key uh, mechanism. So, whoever acquires the mutex first will lock or, or get exclusive access to a shared resource until the uh, the resource is unlocked that means you release the mutex and if anybody has been waiting for the mutex and that person will be allocated the mutex all right so that is the uh, way in which we use the mutex so i have uh, the same two tasks led red task and led blue task on two separate cores core zero and core one so if you haven't seen my earlier video please go and see that first on the creation of uh, or how to use free rtos on a dual core system Okay, so in uh, LED red task and LED blue task, what is happening is um, I first acquire the mutex, semaphore take, and port max delay basically means that I will wait indefinitely until the mutex is available. So if the mutex is not available, when I call this sam take function or API, then I will go to a block state. All right. So once the mutex is available and I acquire it, then I can control the LED. All right. So in this case, the LED red is created first. All right. So that will run. All right. And then the mutex is acquired. And after I blink, then I release. For the blue, the same thing. I will acquire. All right. And once I acquire, I will blink and then I will release. So in this case, the to acquire, we say X number four take. To release, we say X number four give. All right. So in a normal, uh, usual uh, scenario, okay. For example, RTX, what is the expected behavior for this code? So I have T red, all right. I'm just calling it T red and T blue to make it easier. So two tasks for red and blue LED. So red runs first. So when I go, uh, when I run T red, I acquire the mutex. Okay, so since the mutex is originally available, when I acquire it, I'll be able to blink it. Correct, so I'll go through the blinking phase. Okay, so for example, on, then delay, then off, okay, then delay, all right, and then it release. All right, I release and then I look back. So let me go here. So after this, I will release the mutex. Okay, so here is where I release the mutex. Okay, and after that, I go back in a loop. All right. So as we saw in the earlier video, there is this uh, context or time slicing happening. Okay, between tasks of equal priority, which means that at some point of time, okay, while this is happening, there would have been a time slice. All right, and in the time slice, I may have transition over to T blue. All right, so when T blue runs, again okay, when T blue runs, so originally it is waiting for the time slice. Once it runs, it will try to acquire the mutex. And since the mutex was already acquired here, all right, and it's not available, it will go to a block state. Okay, so once I try to acquire and I'm not able to acquire, then T blue will go to a block state. All right, and it will be blocked until when? Until a point of time when the mutex is released. All right, so at this point of time, when the mutex is released, it will become unblocked. 
Okay, so you transition from block to ready state. All right. So in the case of the RTX, okay, in the case of the RTX, okay, we know that when a, when a task has been blocked waiting for a mutex, and when another task releases a mutex, automatically that mutex is allocated to the block task, and then that block task will now acquire the mutex and run. All right. So that is the expected behavior for the RTX. That means what I would expect is once the blue tech blue task uh, acquires the mutex, I mean becomes ready, the mutex is allocated to the blue task, and the blue task is able to continue to run, which means it will now go on to uh, get the mutex. Okay, I'll get the mutex, and then it will go to on, off, and the whole sequence. All right, so that is the code that is shown here. All right, now if I when I run this code, okay, when I run this code, okay, what is the observation I make? Okay, so this is the observation where I only see the red LED blinking and the blue LED does not blink at all. All right, so this is of course a bit strange because you would expect that both the tasks switch between each other because when red releases blue was already blocked waiting for the mutex so it should have been allocated to blue all right so this is where the behavior is actually a bit different all right because of the way the rtos is configured okay now what is happening here is the behavior is because of what we call the time slicing all right so let me draw it for you over here. So let's say this is my timeline here. Okay, and let's say this is all the instances where a time slice occurs. So when we say time slice means is where I'm able to do a contact switching. All right, so let me put it here, T red over here, and I'll put T blue over here. All right, so let's just say that now when T red is running, at this point of time, it acquires the mutex. Okay, and then it runs, it brings the LED, and of course, there is a time slice over here, so blue runs. So when blue runs and tries to acquire the mutex, it is not able to do it, so it goes to a block state. Alright, and then that allows a contact switch back over here. Alright, and then I continue. Alright, I continue. And since the, the other task is currently blocked, then T rate will be able to continue until some point of time when I release the mutex. So let's say here is where I acquire, correct? And here is where I release the mutex. Okay, so when I release the mutex, what happens is this T blue task actually transitions out of the block state into what we call the ready state. Okay, but it is not yet able to run. It is not yet able to run until the next time slice happens okay which is over here so only when the next time slice happens it can run so even though it's in the ready state it cannot run and interestingly even though the release of the mutex unblocks the t blue it does not immediately allocate the mutex to t blue all right t blue will only be able to acquire the mutex when it reaches the time slice and it runs the code to acquire the mutex one more time. Okay, so because of the way our code is structured over here, where the moment I release the mutex, I look back to the beginning and I take it again, what happens is immediately after I release, I again go and acquire the mutex. Okay, I acquire the mutex, which means that. I am able to continue and when the next time slice happens, correct, even though blue is able to run, it is again facing with the same issue where I try to take the mutex and I am not able to take it. Okay, why? Because red has already looped back and acquired the mutex. Okay, so that is why we observe this behavior, which is actually very different from what you see in RTX, correct? Because in RTX, RTOS, the moment a task that was blocked waiting for a mutex and when the mutex is released, it is automatically allocated to the task that was blocked. 
for it to unblock and continue running. Alright, but this is different here. So in order for me to ensure that the mutex that is released goes to the blue LED task, I need to force a contact switch. Correct, because if I wait for the time slice, then by the time I may have acquired the mutex again. Alright, in this particular scenario. Okay, so I must force a contact switch. Alright, so how do I force a contact switch? I can just put a, another VTAX delay for a short duration after I release the mutex. So I'm just going to put a time slice, a short 2 millisecond delay. Okay, just to force a contact switch. Alright, so that is for the red uh, LED as well as the blue LED. So what will happen is, with this change, the moment I release the mutex, okay, the moment I release the mutex, I'm able to give up the CPU, which can allow the blue task to run and acquire the mutex. All right. So let's go ahead and um, run this code. Okay. So the only difference I'm making is that after I release the mutex, okay, I am forcing a contact switch to happen by having a VTAS delay. That means I'm intentionally giving up the uh, CPU, all right? So that the next time slice that happens, I would transition and I would not have rerun the code to acquire the mutex. Okay, so let me run the code here now and we can Uh, observe what will happen okay once the code is uploaded okay so again this is a very different behavior okay from rtx all right because in rtx we have the concept that if a task is blocked waiting for a resource in this case the mutex the moment i release the mutex the task that was blocked would automatically allocate would have been allocated the mutex but in this case the release of the mutex causes the block task to unblock and go to a ready state, but the mutex is not automatically allocated. I still need to wait for the time slice, all right, to happen, and then only I must rerun the code, okay, or, or the OS will cause the code to rerun where I acquire the mutex, and then I'm able to uh, proceed on with the mutex. Alright, so that is the key thing that we must understand here. Alright, so that is why the behavior is different. So what is happening is I am forcing the, uh, or I am intentionally giving up the CPU so that the next time slice would allow the task to, the blue task to run and acquire the new text. Okay, so let's just uh, wait for this compilation to, to complete. All right, so in the meantime, we can also stand by the camera here of the uh, bot. All right, so again, uh, as I mentioned before in class, these are all some of the quirks that we need to be mindful of whenever we switch from one OS to another OS. All right, um, so even though the concept is the same the way it is actually implemented at the OS kernel, all right, could be quite different between one OS and another OS. All right, so we need to be mindful of this when we are uh, switching over, okay, or changing uh, the OS in the project. All right, so all the uh, documentation. All right, of uh, uh, free RTOS is available online. There are a lot of resources, all right, for which you can try uh, for yourself. And uh, free RTOS is um, readily uh, ported, okay, uh, to many different bots, okay, with, with which you can try and, 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 and develop some code.
Okay, so now you can see the code running that at first instance the red LED blinks and then subsequently the blue LED blinks and they are toggling between the both of them. So this is actually the expected behavior okay, for RTX okay, without the forced VTAS delay over here. All right, but in, in free RTOS, you need to make sure that the uh, code that is or the task that is waiting for the mutex actually has a chance to run first to execute that code and acquire the mutex successfully. Okay, and in this case, because the way the code is written is in a loop, okay, where I immediately cycle back to take the semaphore, okay, then the, there is not enough time for the other task to have a chance at acquiring it. So this B task delay actually gives that other task a chance to acquire the new text. Alright, so I hope that this has helped to clear up okay, any doubts that you have about how the new text works in the free RTOS environment. Okay, thank you. Bye.